Jesus, child of hope. One day, Hope stopped by for a visit. It was early evening and a boy named David sat on a tenement floor, glued to the TV. Who's that? The boy asked his mother, pointing to the screen. His mother looked up from a frayed sofa and set her newspaper aside. That's Barack Obama, she said. Brock Cole, what? Barack Obama, she repeated with a smile. I know it's a mouthful. Anyway, he's someone very special. Why? Well, for one thing, how come those people are shouting his name? Because he, are they all his friends? They must be his friends. What's his name again? Boy, you are about to wear me out. Sorry, David whispered. The mother patted a spot on the sofa beside her. Come, she said. If you sit still, I'll tell you his story. They used to call him Barry. His family stretched from Kansas to Kenya. His mama, white as whipped cream. His daddy, black as ink. His mama's folks, Gramps and Toot, were part of the first family he ever knew. Love was the bridge that held them all together. I wish grandma and grandpa lived close by, said David. So do I, said his mother. In Hawaii, breathing in the scent of ginger blossoms, Barry grew, swimming, surfing, and spearfishing next to playmates from places like Portugal, China, India, and Japan. And never once did he ask if all those people could get along. They just did. Like the kids in my class, said David. You're right, said his mother. Honolulu looked like heaven. But even though the blue of the sea was sharp enough to slice the sun and the sun warmed the sand between his toes and the sand sparkled like diamonds, nothing could fill the hole in Barry's heart once his daddy went away. His mom and Gramps and Toot told him brave and funny tales of his father's past to soothe his hurt and make him laugh. But that didn't stop Barry from feeling sad sometimes, especially when he heard the word divorce. I miss my dad too, said David. I know you do, said his mother. Barry's mom married a man named Lolo. And oh, the wonderland he took Barry to, Indonesia, a land of pet gibbons and pet crocodiles. Barry laughed himself silly, sliding in the rainy season mud. He caught crickets, flew kites, and joyed in the jungle at the edge of his new home, a perfect paradise, until the sight of beggars broke his heart. Barry started to wonder, will I ever be able to help people like that? Hope hummed deep inside him. Someday, son, someday. There's lots of poor people, huh, mama? Yes, honey, 
I'm afraid so. Mama, said David, we gotta help them. Before dawn each morning, Barry rose, his mother's voice driving him from dreamland. Time for learning English grammar and the golden rule. Be honest, be kind, be fair, she taught him. Your father is smart and strong and full of courage and you will be just like him. How can I, thought Barry. I don't even remember his voice. I'm smart, said David. I can spell S-C-H-O-O-L. Very good, said his mother. You keep that up. Back in Hawaii, a surprise came one day. I'm here, son, he heard his father say. Barry listened to the strange song of his father's voice. Your grandmama says you're doing very well in school. It's in the blood, I think. Was this tall and skinny Harvard man the one who lived in all those stories? For a time, all Barry could do was stare. As the days passed, they would share talks and walks. And then his dad was gone again, a ghost once more. Hold tight, said Hope. This strand of memory is stronger than you know. I wish I could meet my daddy, said David. I know, son, but no matter what, you've got me. The sun and moon paraded past Polly's peak more times than Barry's quick mind could count. Soon, he pounded across the high school gym, slamming the basketball his father had sent him one Christmas. A few letters flew back and forth from mother to father, from father to son. Barry was the bridge that connected them. Sadly, some days he felt as if that bridge were sinking. What's a Polly? Asked David. Polly is a mountain in Hawaii, said his mother. Oh, who am I? Asked Barry. I don't look like my mother. I don't look like my father. I only look like me. Barry was dizzy with questions. You are not your father, a friend told him. You are not your mother. You must choose your own way. Choose what, thought Barry. Choose how. He searched for courage inside himself. Hope was waiting there. What is hope? Mama, asked David. Hope is believing in something before you see it. Like make-believe, asked David. No, honey, said his mother. Hope is real. Barry's mind spun like a top. How could he know which way to go? Listen said Hope, and he did. There it was, the answer repeating like a chorus in his ear. Education is the key, said Gramps. Education is the secret, said Toot. Education is the way, said Mom. Education is the path, 
said his father. Remember, it's in the blood. What do I have in my blood? Asked David. A kind heart and a good brain, just like Barry. Barry rolled up his sleeves and studied in the shadow of Polly's Peak, in the shadow of the Hollywood sign, in the shadow of Langston's Harlem. Still, he couldn't stop asking, who am I? Some called him an ugly name, too terrible to repeat, but he refused to answer to that. Instead, one morning he slipped on the name he'd been born with, the name of his father, Barack. For the first time in his life, he wore it proudly, like a coat of many colors. Like Joseph in the Bible, said David, you remembered said his mother. When Barack wasn't studying, he liked to jog along the Hudson River. He couldn't help but notice the river of hurt and hate and history that separated blacks and whites. Being both, he could not take sides. Don't worry, said Hope. I will be your bridge. In time, you will be the bridge for others. David's mother sighed. Barry's aunt called him at school because his daddy died. I'll bet he cried, said David. Barack hid his sadness. Study said the voices of his childhood. Watch, learn, keep your eyes open. Barack's eyes saw the hungry and the homeless, crying out like beggars in Jakarta, burning a hole in his heart. When his classes came to an end, he raced to Chicago to join hands with the church to learn new lessons, not how to be black or white, but how to be a healer, how to change things, how to make a difference in the world. Hooray, said David. His mother gave him a squeeze. The work was grueling with stretches of failure and puny patches of success. Door to door, Barack went early mornings, late nights, pleading and preaching, coaxing strangers to march together to make life better for everyone. He worked as hard as a farmer, planting the words, yes, we can, like seeds in spring. Impatient, Barack kept wondering, if those seeds would ever sprout, how worried that the hope in him would fade away. He didn't give up, did he? Asked David. What do you think? Asked his mother. One Sunday when Barack was sitting in church, Barack heard God say, slow down, look around you. Now look to me. There is hope enough here to last a lifetime. Barack smiled, tears rolling down his cheeks. Suddenly, he knew for certain hope would last long enough for him to make a difference. Why did he cry, mama? They were happy tears, son, happy tears. 
Before Barack chased his future, he visited his past, traveling to Kenya to find his family, his father's bones, and his own place in the circle of Africa. He sat with Alma and Zituni, Jane and Sarah, Yusuf and Saeed. He swapped stories with Roy and Bernard, Mark and George, and all the other relatives who had prayed for such a day. Finally, Barack knelt in the soil at his father's grave, listening to the still small voice that spoke to his heart. Go now. Fly free, become the man you were meant to be. Live in hope, keep the past in memory, but shape your own tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 said David. What's so great about tomorrow? Well, said his mother, if we have hope today, we get to make tomorrow whatever we want it to be. Hope may be slim and beautiful, but she's no weak thing. Barack proved that when he went to Harvard Law School, convinced people to join hands in Illinois, wrote new laws to give the poor a better chance. He proved it again when all of Washington, D.C. wondered what this skinny kid with the funny name could offer a nation in need. But the hope that lived in Barack burned bright. And on the night he became senator, Everybody felt the flame. Is that why everybody's shouting his name? No, son, there's more to the story. One star kissed night, four years later, as his wife Michelle stood by, Barack smiled on a sea of faces from Wichita to Waikiki. He saw whites and blacks, rich and poor, Christians and Muslims and Jews. He felt the presence of Gramps and two. He saw the ghosts of his parents, of Martin Luther King Jr. and JFK. And on that special day, Barack was the bridge that held them all together. Thank you for electing me president, he said. Can we make America better? Can we work together as one? With a single voice, the crowd called out, yes, we can. The little boy sat silently for a while. Then he said, Mama, I've been thinking. When I grow up, I want to be the president. Is that okay? His mother blinked back tears, crushed David to her chest, and held him there for a long, long time. Thank you.